Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Pete, this is the Evercadian, uh, the channel dedicated to all kinds of handheld gaming, the Evercade, the Steam Deck, Playdate, whatever. As long as I can play it with these sexy hands, I am going to showcase it on the channel. Anyway, what are we talking about today? Well, the title kind of, it is, is it clickbaity? But no, it's really what I'm trying to talk talk about today is some of the thoughts I've been having is like the Evercade now has been a part of my gaming my gaming habits now since May of 2020 and I absolutely love the Evercade I love everything that it's doing uh, and done and continue to do but is is the hype over as the retro community kind of you know the fads over as they moved on is there new things and I want to talk a little bit about that because it's 2023. We're three years into it now. And, you know, Evercade has done a lot. So just to backtrack, anybody who's new to the channel, what is the Evercade? Well, this is the Evercade EXP. This was the latest release from Blaze Entertainment. It's an upgraded version of the OG version here that came out. This OG version, uh, actually, it's the black and white one. Let me go get one for you right now because I have tons of them. The lack of preparedness to shoot this video today is discerning. Now, this is the white one. This is my original Evercade here. I don't use it as a player anymore. I prefer to use my purple one just because I find the screen a little bit better. But uh, yeah, this is the OG. It came out in May of 2020, just a few months after the global pandemic was just, I pretty much, they announced on, on uh, March 11th, the global pandemic for COVID. And this came out, which hit, just amazingly well for me because during the pandemic we were all shuttered inside and it just it struck every chord as a retro gamer for me so I jumped on the hype band a band bandwagon I kind of played the death out of this and my channel my original channel open every box uh really kind of started focusing a lot on that moving away from other type of content on the channel and I've continued that with this new channel uh the ever Canadian and Evercade's a big part of what I do. And the hype was real. Like back in 2020, leading into 2021, the OG handle was everywhere. It was on a lot of the major channel, channels like the Metal Jesus is, the Game Sack, and to majority of it, positive reviews. Because when this bad boy come out, it was super affordable. Like this was $80 Canadian. You got three collections with it. They since released a colored variant of it right here, which uh, that's my player. This is one I play all the time. And you can see like just the screen quality and, and everything is much better on the new one. And this just came out. But the fab was real. Everybody was talking about it. My channel grew. A lot of other channels grew. Some dedicated channels out there started up and are doing quite well. You know, Evercade Effect, uh, uh, the um, Crow Evercade, a bunch of channels out there, myself included. And I started... When I reimagined my life on YouTube, I went back and I said, I really want to focus on what I love about gaming in general, which is Andel Gaming. I've an Andel Gamer at the core, and Evercade was it. But the hype got even crazier in 2021 when they announced and we got the VS, right? The, the VS came and hit, and that was the home console version of it, and that game gave gave us another opportunity to play the same cards across the board. The hype was going. Everybody seemed to love it. There was very few negative reviews. Of course, there were a few out there. But the hype was continuing to build and build and build. And we were still in the pandemic. So, which kind of hurt it a little bit in a way because it's a multiplayer console. But, it, you know, it came out when people really couldn't get together with friends. But they could play with their family. And, and I really like my VS. So... But now, let's get back to the main question. Is the hype over? Is the fad over? Are people moving on? Well, the XP came out, and for the most part, very, very positive reviews. My even my even 100-hour uh, review, there's some drawbacks to the system. The fact that I have it plugged in right now, it seems like I still haven't been able to figure out when it's on and when it's not. <laughs> but that's just not me. But I've got it plugged in now, charging, because I've been playing it quite a bit. Um... But there is a major hurdle. Their launch was impacted by <laughs> their special editions getting stolen off a truck, off a lorry in England. And But the white one came out, and it seems to be, in, be in doing okay. But there's not a lot of channels out there outside of the core, the very small core, like myself and a few other channels, that are really playing a lot and talking a lot about the EXP. There is momentary buzz when a new collection is announced. Some of the big channels grab a hold of it of course, and they talk about it. But I'm just wondering, 
have we reached the crescendo of the Evercade product line? I don't really think so. I think there's a lot of room for them to continue to grow, but I don't think it's in their bread and butter of the hardware space. I don't believe they need to add any more new hardware out on the console. I think they need to update some of the software. I think that's what's going to get people back into it. Because when the Evercade EXP is announced, there was a major, major positivity in news editor because of Capcom, right? Because of the Capcom collections that came pre-installed, but it also had a little bit of backlash to it too from the core community. And you know, the core community is what keeps the lights on for products like this. We're the community that talk about it all the time and keep, like, you know, keep the porch light on. So it keeps uh, the house warm, keeps whatever. So when they do drop big news, you know, it's something the big channels can get a hold of, but everybody gets a lift in the community. Everybody moves up a little bit. Everybody gets all the little channels out there, including myself and others. will get a little lift from the Metal Jesuses of the, you know, rocks. Or I keep using him because he's the biggest retro channel I know out there. I mean, there's Retro Dodo. There's a bunch of channels out there, right? ETA Prime, all those people. And, but like... I don't know. I don't know if the fad's over, but I feel like there's less big channels talking about it right now, post the Capcom. And maybe there's something that they could do around software. Maybe another big licensing deal they can do with a Konami or Sega. I think that's where they need to focus now, is going and scoring some major, major wins in the software and licensing area. The hardware is awesome. Like, I mean, the hardware is really good. It keeps shutting off here because I constantly need to do my time out here but anyway um i think it's all about you know for them to move forward it's going to be uh the ability to score some big licenses and i think that's when we'll start seeing more of uh the hype starting again but i don't believe the fad's over i don't believe the fad's over but what is the what is the lifespan of a fad for a product like this or products like this like, what is the lifespan? What can we expect? Can we expect a 10-year tailwind out of this? And and can we expect to continually seeing this show up on and get bigger and bigger and the community grow and grow and show up on bigger channels and more, more mainstream gaming channels? The fact that we saw IGN review the products and a few other of the bigger, bigger kind of, like I said, mainstream gaming channels and, and web pages and all that kind of stuff cover it. I think I think the fad is not over yet, but I think they'll need a big licensing deal for the be the crescendo to kind of really push it into mainstream. Uh, maybe it is just signing and developing their own games and turning it into the retro like a retro a brand new retro system akin to what you see with you know the big three, right? They have their own products, their own publishing deals and all that. Maybe Blaze can do something similar, but just in the independent retro space and kind of like, you know, have its own catalog of Blaze games, of Evercade games. But anyway, I just really just wanted to chat about this a little bit because I, I want to know what the community thinks. Are, are you, is the greater gaming community, greater retro gaming community done with Evercade? And will it just kind of live and bubble and sizzle a little bit every now and then, but you know, just maybe like a crock pot. I don't know why I'm talking about food so much today, but maybe it'll be just like a crock pot and that the small community will continue to stay warm, but won't have any major hype around it. I, I'm not sure, but all I can tell you is I am deeply invested and in, into the Evercade ecosystem because I love it and I love the community and I love the conversations around it. And for me, the fad, the fad is not as important anymore the hype is not important is because this came into my gaming life at the perfect time and helped me and my family and my friends get through the pandemic and continue to continue to build the community that we started to build and it keeps growing every day so anyway let me know this is kind of more of a rambling video more of my opinion video but i'm really interested to in know what you're gonna think and maybe share some thoughts that i haven't even talked about or don't you know i've not heard before around the evercade and your own experiences until the next time, thanks for watching. If you like this type of content uh, or any type of Evercade content, consider subscribing or subscribing to another person out there in the Evercade community. Because, you know, as everybody rises up, we all rise up. Bye, everyone.